unpaid electricity bills that come before the courts. And their analysis of the extent of that debt is that it is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Their managing director, James Tracy, spoke to me before we came on air and laid out just how much more debt is coming down the track. It's not looking pretty. Uh, I think um, all roads for the next four or five years lead to NAMA. Uh, if you if you consider that NAMA purchased uh, loans off the banks, I think it was in excess of seventy five billion of loans. Now they got it at a discount, so I think they purchased it for around fifty billion. And experts reckon that about forty percent of that fifty billion, or actually sixty percent of that uh, fifty billion, is non performing. So we would estimate so the the, 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 the non performing portion of the loans that they've taken over would be in excess of forty billion. So if you split that up over the next five years, you're saying... Yeah, we reckon about 20 billion of that will end up in the courts over the next three to five years. So just NAMA-related bad debt alone will probably relate. Okay. So each year there's a baseline figure of anywhere between four, four and seven billion. billion. And that's excluding all of the, uh, the, 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 the personal mortgage debt that will probably come down the tracks now as a result of the new bankruptcy and uh, the personal insolvency laws. The graph of debt that had worked its way through the legal system over the course of the last three years, though, would suggest that things were really bad in 2009, worse in 2010, and then seemed to level off or plateau. You say not, though. There was, uh, 2010 was unusual. There were four uh, businessmen stroke developers from Cork, and they uh, each had... Uh, three major judgments from three different banks. I think there was Ulster Bank, Anglo-Irish Bank and some other bank. And the four judgments combined were in excess of 240 million each. So they really inflated. So uh, each each of the developers was sued separately. So it was joint and several liabilities. So if you if you add all those figures up together, they they they, they really okay. So 2010 is a, a blip in the system, and that we yeah. really are still uh, on an upward curve here. Yeah, in the next three to five years, are, is going to see significant increases on the four billion from 2011. You break down the debtors by profession. Who are they? Uh, well, what really kind of struck me when I was doing the data analysis of, of the, the professions, that the professions would be, so the plaintiffs, just say, for example, if the plaintiff is a bank or a credit union, they would be the ones who would list the, the occupation of the debtor in the court documents. But when I was looking through it, I mean, if you consider that probably one in every three people in the state work in, at some level uh, as a, they would be classified broadly as a public servant or civil servant, whether that's a, a doctor or a nurse or a teacher. But when, when I looked uh, at the occupations listed, less than half of 1% were listed as public servants. Which less kind of half left of, of half of one percent, which is interesting because anecdotally we would all know the guards or prison officers or whoever who have two, three, maybe in some cases four properties. Uh, so this suggests that either their cases haven't yet come before the courts, or somehow they're managing to keep their heads above water. Yeah, I guess so. I, I was thinking about it on the on the way into the studio, and uh, like my, fa- I've nothing, absolutely nothing uh, whatsoever against uh, public servants. My family, lots of my family are teachers, nurses, friends, family. Um, I guess it's a combination of um, public servants being slightly more conservative than the, the, the than the general public, and. Uh, they're not uh, as secure in their jobs as they were in, in, in the past, but they certainly have some form of security, so, so maybe that's a factor. Give me some of the other professions there. Interesting one uh, would be accountants, uh, people involved in financial services, accountants. Number of judgments in 2011, 50, compared to 14 in 2006. So almost 1% of, uh, of total judgments uh, against accountants. Engineers, architects, as you would expect, uh, figured quite highly, just over half percent. Um, people in construction, obviously, uh, took a significant hit. And uh, 35% of the defendants are classified as gentlemen. Now, maybe maybe some of those gentlemen would be, would be guards or nurse or guards uh, or teachers. Okay. Uh, but gentlemen, is, is that a self-nominating category, or was that the bank's description? I think that's the bank's the... description. I mean, some of the some of the classifications are unusual. Uh, there's there's one a sole femme, which I presume is single lady, and they they account for quite a lot. And um, are retailers a category? Uh, they would be under retailers, publicans. We have five uh, percent, and also. Um, so sorry, five percent of the total is constituted by or comprised by publicans. 
yeah, retailers, uh, stroke publicans, and then there will be self-employed, which I ge- which I gather a number of uh, uh, the the self-employed will also be retailers. Because of all of these professions, you would have thought that the coming year looks the bleakest for retailers. Retailers, unfortunately, well, it, well, it's kind of good news and bad news. I mean, if you are somebody who uh, went into the retail trade in the last six months or 12 months, you probably got a fantastic deal with the landlord and you wouldn't have had to enter into 20-year leases. You, 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 would have, you would have dictated your own terms almost. So from that point of view, it's good for anybody who's, get, who's considering getting into the retail space. Because contrary to the measures introduced in the budget uh, securing the upward-only rent review, the position of the upward-only rent review in Irish law, there are very, very good deals to be had from pragmatic landlords with vacant premises out there. Oh, absolutely. And uh, you, you, you even see now, like walking around the high streets of the various towns and cities around the country, there is a uh, pop-up shops, which is, which is a recent phenomenon. There's one just off Grafton Street. It's a bread shop. It's, 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 it's a fantastic shop. But uh, I think with the retail space, what's really hitting them as well as the lack of footfall is that I think 30% of uh, consumer spending is done online now. So that's obviously going to have a huge impact on the uh, people going into the shops. So but, uh, year on year, um, would you expect to see retailers uh, becoming a significantly larger category in that list of professions? I would think so. Certainly, anybody who is stuck in 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 a, in a, in a lease for with ten years left on it and paying boom time uh, rents, uh, it's going to be quite bleak for them, unfortunately. James Tracy, the Managing Director of Stubbs Gazette, talking to me earlier on. At the top of the programme, I said that we were going to be doing an item a little 